May the 7th, 2019. Guys, you're looking at uh, the SDO. It's a satellite that gives us Earth-facing perspectives of the sun. Notice your timestamp on the 4th as this starts and goes up until the current images. We've seen several coronal mass ejections, and we've seen solar flares uh, coming from the sunspot that's rotating around. By the way, there's two now, and it followed Mars' uh, connectivity point to the sun. We'll look at that. Now we have two sunspots. There's actually almost a third one trying to form in the middle. But right now we have two very active, and you see these pops and these giant arcs. Guys, I know I said it before, but it would take 109 planets lined up our size of Earth to go across the face of the sun. So that gives you a perspective. But these bursts that you're looking at are very powerful. One this morning, the one that you just saw, give that whip-like motion, sent a coronal mass ejection towards our planet. Right now, I just checked it again. Uh, NOAA and NASA are trying to track it and put it into a model. I'm not sure how strong it will be. What you're looking at is this flare. Notice how these were real sharp and real fast, and this one rose up and is a little wider. That tells you it was a longer event. But this flare on the 6, guys, was the strongest of this solar cycle. Just being an M flare wasn't that bad. As far as uh, the scale of going up into a strong uh, C's and X flares, or excuse me, M and X flares, but it did create uh, that impact on our planet with a 7.2 earthquake. Now, I sped this up and I recorded it. It's, this goes back to January. Notice your timestamp at the bottom. The blue dot is Earth. The orange or brown dot is Mars. The uh, Mercury is a silver dot. Venus is the yellow. The white dot is a satellite called the Parker satellite. Now, notice the Earth's connectivity point. Again, the blue dot. Look at your scale. is suddenly just jumped. Let's back this up. I'm talking about fast, I think, magnetic reversals. And some of these effects are uh, caused by the weak solar energy coming from the sun, the weakened shields of our planet. But the Earth is connected to the sun via a long plasma tube that's very flexible and flowing. Now notice here, in 19 hours, the connectivity point of the Earth went from the south pole of the sun to the north pole of the sun. Now you see it here, we're still in January, we're seeing a lot of fluctuations. When the sun gets weak, they're, t they're talk about uh, magnetic reversals on the sun, not polar reversals, magnetic reversals to where the compasses would switch. The sun has many actual magnetic points, but here you've got the Earth, you've got Venus, as they cross 1273. Now this is again back in January. We're going to advance it up. Sunspot keeps rotating. The numbers keep going up on it. But now we are, again, at the end. We're into February. The Earth is back at the bottom. We see Mars coming across and Venus. I'm just speeding this through, kind of to give you an idea. Now, so here's this, going back to uh, April on the uh, 9th. Tw this is the last time 127338 uh, rotated. Now that it's come back, they're calling it 127040. There was a small sunspot there. But again, last month we watched this sunspot. And if you remember, we talked about it being the strongest uh, so far. But now it's stronger and it's bigger and it has friends. Notice Mars is following that sunspot. We're talking about an electric universe. And these magnetic connectivity points between the planets and the sun which keeps the planets in orbit but there's something else there's a tremendous amount of energy being fed via these plasma tubes from the sun to the planet has been for going on for a long time now we are at 1274 i've advanced it up now notice your timestamp may the 7th mars is coming was coming behind it now we see a new sunspot if we back it up Again, right now we've got the Earth in the southern hemisphere. Normally it's in the northern hemisphere. It can change very fast. Again, Mars here, it seems to be following this sunspot. And because the sun is weak, then 
they say these plasma tubes can connect and break and within eight minutes reconnect. That's how fast this can happen. But normally the most of the planets are in the northern or central hemisphere of the sun. We're seeing a lot of activity towards that southern pole. That's what makes me think that we are dealing with a solar magnetic uh, reversal. And so we will be watching that. It could have a lot to do with our weather. Now, notice your time stamp. This was a large flare, and it caused some trouble. It caused some radio blackouts. But again, let me play it back. This is uh, the sunspot we're watching. Solar flare. Notice the blast out to the right. Yesterday morning, uh, they started watching, or excuse me, this morning, they started watching that. There, that would be the coronal mass ejection which is a layer or surface section of the sun that explodes. In this case, this is what they're saying now in space weather, possible Earth-directed CME. Over the past three days, sunspot AR2740 has puffed numerous minor coronal mass ejections into space. Until this morning, none were Earth-directed. However, a faint halo CME that left the sun during the early hours of May 7th um, may be the strongest of the current uh, solar cycle. Now, also, it says uh, Thomas Ashcroft, who recorded the outburst with a shortwave radio telescope in New uh, Mexico, uh, had this to say, and you can go to Space Weather, which is linked on our website, and actually listen to it. But notice the green lines, these upward drifting feathers of inside the solar burst. He said, this one really rips. He says, I recommend listening uh, with headphones. If you go, again, over to our website, scale, scroll down on the left, and you'll see it. It says, how does a sunspot make radio waves? It starts with a solar flare. Beams of electrons accelerated by flares slice through the sun's atmosphere. Now, that creates a ripple of plasma waves and radio static that is detectable on Earth 93 million miles away. Astronomers classify solar radio bursts into five types. Ashcroft recording captured a mixture, a mixture of type 3 and type 4. And something else, Ashcroft has been recording solar radio bursts for many years. He says yesterday he picked up something new. In the dynamic spectrum, note the feathery upward drifting radio emissions over in the green with the error. He says, I've never seen anything like that, not even during solar maximum. This is auspicious and a rare activity be happening at the time it is. There's a lot of strange things going on. We are dealing with a whole new science that's changing before our eyes. Now, again, I went back and checked this uh, CME tracker. It has not picked up the information yet. If it does, you will see a model, and it will come off the surface of the sun. Again, they're saying it is Earth-facing. The Earth is in the yellow dot on this model. You've got uh, Mercury. You've got Venus here, Mars is the red dot, the squares are satellites, and uh, the green one is the one you keep seeing on the uh, magnetic connectivity point, which it does have, called the Parker SP. So do the other uh, satellites. They're all held in place by the electrogravity of the sun. Also, guys, very quickly, I'm going to put a link to this website that my Patriot Supply built for us. Right now, this $249 Alexa Pure water filter, that with this filter will give you 5,000 gallons of the purest water you can drink on this planet. Reduces 99.9% .9 of 200 plus contaminants, including heavy metals, fluoride, chlorine, viruses and bacteria, pesticides, and pharmaceuticals. Guys, just to keep it quick, $100 off. That's the $249 system. Again, special offer for you guys. They'll also notice emergency food, air purifica uh, purification, heirloom seeds, and survival essentials. Heads up, be safe.